Now let's get into news trading. News trading is my favorite thing to do. I don't put orders on before the news hits. I'm not into bracket trading news. You can do that. That's just, I, I feel I don't have to do that. So if I want to do some manual discretionary trading throughout the day, what I typically do, my first order of business is, as you can go to, you know, there's many websites out there, but let's go with a tried and true. Let's go ahead and take a look at forexfactory.com. So looking at forexfactory.com, clicking on calendar, you can also click on this time window to adjust your time zone and whether you're on daylight savings time or not so that your time that you read here on the chart synchronizes with wherever you are in the world local time. You know, I always pay attention on a day-to-day -day basis where are my orange folder and red folder items, the news reports that are most likely to cause some energy to come into the market and cause a reaction. And the ones that I really like, I love central banker news, you know, interest rate news, interest rate meeting news, GDP numbers, inflation numbers, employment numbers like non-farm payroll, a Canada's employment news, Britain's employment news, Germany, anywhere where there's prominent news items hitting the market, those are the times I'm going to go be ready, and it's real simple. Like, for instance, on Wednesday, May 9th, there was a PPI news that was going to hit at 7.30 Central Time, Chicago Time. We had oil inventories at 9.30. Great news item if you trade oil on your you know, MT4 platform through your broker. If you're trading a New Zealand dollar-related pair, there was major news, official cash rate and their monetary policy statement at 4 in the afternoon U.S. Central Time and so on. So what I do is I know going into the next trading day, I already have in my mind, okay, I'm going to pay attention to U.S., you know, the Euro, the British Pound related pairs at this time. And at this time, I'm going to watch some pairs tied to the New Zealand dollar. Here we had China. CPI and PPI news, you know, that will get a reaction out of the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar at times. So it's always these orange folder or red folder items. So I literally week to week can go pick times where I know I want to be paying attention to the market when the market isn't reacting to key support and resistance levels. I don't want to sit there and watch the charts for eight hours a day. I'm going to pick and choose, and a lot of times these key news events drive price into key support and resistance levels. It's, you know, it's just how it works. Energy comes into the market, moves price to an area where there's going to be a reaction. Now what I'm looking to do on a lower time frame chart with a news item, say a news item hits, let's say there's British pound news, I'm on the five minute chart that day. British Pound had signaled a long setup. It activated. So there, there's been some positive upside momentum in the British Pound. Then news hits. And we get a little bit of a whipsaw down, and then we get some lift. So we're getting into a news environment, a news reaction. So how I like to trade news items is when I get a bar close where I can see there's been a prominent reversal or some energy coming into the market, I'm not just going to jump in at the bar close and go long and say, okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to follow that energy of price. And when the bar closes, I'll go and I'll set a buy stop. My, you know, I'm on a five minute chart. I'll put a buy stop about 10 to 12 pips above that bar close. So I'll set an order up here like a buy stop. I'll get ready to drag down the order and lay it right about 10 to 12 pips. Doesn't have to be super precise. Just, you know, I can look over the side and see what about 10 to 12 pips are. I'll put a buy stop in. If price can maintain that, maintain that momentum and come up and tag me and fill me, then I'm in the trade. I'm now long in the market. I'm playing the long side 
out of a reaction to news. Now, I'm not jumping in 10 seconds after news. I'm, I'm waiting till I get a good strong bar. I had a reversal bar on a five minute. Now I have a power bar, a bar that you know closes near the high. And I'm already in an environment of upside momentum. If you have access and you also have the FX push indicator, I can see momentum is starting to build. So there's, there's stronger upside momentum and they're starting to be dissipating downside momentum. I put price 10 to 12 pips away from a bar close and I see if the market can carry that news based momentum into my order. I get filled as soon as I get filled. Whatever my typical risk is that I would use on a five minute chart, I would never put a stop any less than about 15 pips on a news related trade. What I like to do is typically trade the most recent price pivot, especially if that was a pivot made by news. Now, if this is 100 pips, I'm not going to put a 100 pip stop. You know, 20 to 30 pips is about my maximum stop that I would ever use on a five minute chart trading a news item. So I might just say, OK, if I get triggered in the trade, I'm willing to put my stop somewhere in the body of that power bar or at the bottom but I'm not going to exceed 30 pips. It's just, there's, it's not needed. There needs to be instantaneous follow to it. And when I do get follow through, I'm going to bleed out that risk. So let's go ahead and color this red. This is my stop. I've been buy stopped into the market. The market went up, hit a buy stop that I had resting. I'm filled at that price. I'm long. Market carries through into bar, starts running away from my position. Now that's my risk initially. So the minimum I should be going for is about two to one. I always like to target a minimum two to one reward to risk. So we'll just ballpark draw in about what looks like two to one to me. And we'll go ahead and color that. So now I know where, I, where the market needs to go to where I would think about taking off a portion of the trade or just closing out the trade and calling it good. Especially if it starts to grind and take a while to get there. When it gets there, I'm going to take a portion of that trade off. If it just keeps driving right on through, I'm sitting on my hands. You know, I'm letting price tell me what I need to do. Soon as price gets about to my one to one point, so let's say I had, let's just arbitrarily say I, I ended up having 28 pips of risk on. And the market gets about 28, 29, 30 pips in the money. I'm moving my stop to break even. There's no need to have risk on anymore if I'm at my one to one point. So now I'm sitting, waiting, waiting. I had one prominent pullback lift, prominent pullback with a pivot lift. Now it's lifting. It breaks above this highest price achieved since the news release. It's pressing higher. I'm moving my stop up below the most recent pivot. I've locked in some profit. Pushes, misses my two to one, goes sideways for a bit, gets a second wind of some upside momentum, comes up, tags my two to one area. So as soon as it's up near the two to one area, if I'm not closing out my entire trade, I'm going to put my stop anywhere near these most recent pivots. Price goes up, I take some of my trade off. Why? Well, it didn't just power up through. You know, we had a big pulse move and we grinded higher, but we don't have energy maintaining in the move. Yes, the market's moving upwards in a, you know, in a stair-stepping manner, but the authority of the initial move is, is dying off and I can see my trade intensity has really died out and I'm even getting some challenges as I'm pressing higher. So sellers are willing to come in and slap that upside pushes and they're slapping price as it's going higher. Sometimes that slap down is just those that got into the move or are selling to cover and unwinding chunks of their trade. Now if I had my stop in this area, the market came down very near, would have gotten very close to stopping me out, holds, starts lifting higher again. I know where my two to one point is. It presses beyond the two to one. 
any stop I had there I would be moving it higher first here as price comes up and starts pressing above the previous highs I'm moving my stop higher to the next most recent pivot as, as I stair step higher but when I get a press a slap down rejection and a press anytime price goes up and challenges a prior high and can't press through and comes down I'm always of the mentality that I'm looking to extract and, and thin down my remaining position so I would be closing out or taking off any substantial portion of my position still on maybe leaving about a third of the trade on max eventually it comes down and just stops me out and I made money on the trade now there's other times when you could get a news release and then you just get a signal to trigger that's fine you can work those just I don't like to take signals in the first five minutes or ten minutes out of a news release I like to see if the move will maintain momentum and if it does if, if the move does continue you usually have at least one additional pickup point where you'll get a kickback against the move and then it will roll over and continue and you can usually get another signaled entry so I like to take long setups when there's upside momentum showing on the pulse indicator I'll take short setups when there's downside momentum so I'm not gonna work a short setup when I'm still detecting upside momentum I'll wait for a regular signaled uh, pulse trade signal or I'll wait till we're already in some downside momentum and see uh, if I if that move can continue or give me a secondary entry so trading news is it, the good thing about trading news it's very efficient you can go look at the calendar pick your times to watch the market if you're watching two pairs four pairs six pairs especially ones that are most correlated to what news is hitting you're usually if the news causes a reaction sometimes news hits sometimes news is within expectations and there's not much of a reaction and then there's times when the news surprises the market and you might get a pulse like this and three hours later it's still going so you just have to take what the market gives you but the more energy that's in the market the more I like to be active trading when the market is is doing this and going sideways and there's not a lot of energy I'm not excited to be trading setups I trade that market when I know there's going to be energy price reactions to support resistance levels price reactions to news releases so those in my opinion are the two best times to go in and target trades with the system and with the overall trading tools that are part of the STE package the strike trader elite trading system just wanted to cover news that's how I like to cover news we'll add more content going forward we'll show you more examples but at least now we've given you the basics of how the system works after you've loaded it to your charts and then when we like to go out and target trade setups as we work trades in the FX spot markets there you have it if you have any questions just contact us and that is trading news